history is better than fiction. In fiction, the people that experience and do amazing things are not real. But the amazing things have happened in history, and the people who experience them do exist. My job as a museum educator is to tell the stories of the ordinary people through the artifacts they've left behind. People have done inspiring things in the world, and by telling their stories, we can improve wor the world as well and do amazing things. When I was a little girl living in Germany with my family, my parents bought me the Afrobets book of African American or Baffrobed's book of black heroes from A to Z. I remember this book for two reasons. The first was that the illustrator had creatively drawn on each page um, examples of children posing in the shapes of the letters. I would often try to lay down on the carpet and do the poses myself, but I was never very good. The other reason is the letter M. In the Afrobet's book of black heroes, the letter M stood for Malcolm X. And it wasn't just Malcolm X that intrigued me, but the name that he adopted, Malik El Shabazz. Shabazz happened to be the middle name of my younger brother. So it made me wonder, who was Malcolm X? And who was Shabazz? And why was my brother named after, <laughs> had such a unique name? Suddenly, this book and this figure were connected to me through my brother, through this history. Suddenly, Malcolm X wasn't just a bio or a fun fact. He was a person. He was a puzzle, a mystery. He was personal. People inevitably affect change. And people inevitably affect change. And simply by living, we are creating history every day. I propose that I propose that the stories that we learn about the history from the past and from the people around us, that through history, through seeing it as narratives or stories, we can inspire change and create, create ideas and also prompt action. When I was about eight years old, I experienced racism for the first time. My brother and I were visiting my grandmother and my aunts in Georgia for the summer, and we were playing outside in the playground across from her apartment complex with another young child. Um, as we were going down the slide, the boy suddenly, about six years old, suddenly grabbed my brother's shoes off of his feet and began pouring sand into his shoes. My brother, of course, immediately tackled him to the ground, and they began scuffling for a minute before I pulled them apart. Then, he began cursing at us and calling us names. I was stunned. We had been playing for an hour with no problem. Then all of a sudden, he was threatening us? I got angry. But instead of retaliating in kind, I told him about Martin Luther King Jr. and about equality and how we were all equal. I said it with force and with power, too, and I think I impressed him because he soon ran off after my speech. I was still fuming when I returned home and told my aunt about what had happened. She, interestingly enough, burst out laughing. I couldn't understand what was so funny at the time. I mean, I had stood up for myself. I had, I had stood up for myself and my younger brother. She told me, you should have cursed him out instead of giving him a lecture. She was giving me permission to curse. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I 
I still cringe and laugh at that story, but at the same time, I see that as a ch time where I actually took history and used it and used the stories of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King to try to reach a child at a playground. For many people, history is somewhere between torture and eating dirt. But for me, it's something that I love. Growing up, I wanted to share with people the, and teach them the way that the stories, the way that I teach them about history, the way that I understood it, was through interconnecting stories. This is inevitably led me to becoming working at a museum. I wanted to not only tell them these stories, but also, but also make them relevant and personal to their everyday life. This is also why I decided to work with Eric Powell and other Spotsylvania educators on the Trail to Freedom Teacher Resources Toolkit. This toolkit was to teach students about local African American history around them, connecting it with the national story of history and having them see the personal stories in their community and be helping them become inspired like I was with Afrobets. As I said before, history is about people and about change. And history is about people and about change. In the 1960s, in Fredericksburg, Virginia, hi local high school students decided to stage sit-ins in, in, in drug stores in their community. They got together with the local, le local members of the NAACP and decided to stage sit-ins inspired by the stories of the college students in Greensboro, North Carolina. For weeks, they staged sit-ins at Woolworths, at Peebles, and at Grant's Drug Store. They also held protests and marched in front of businesses in downtown Fredericksburg on Caroline Street. Their actions ushered in the integration of lunch counters in downtown Fredericksburg. In Stafford County, where we are today, five high school students decided to integrate in Stafford High Schools. The result was that the following year, two elementary school girls were able to integrate Stafford County Public Schools. Although these events seem really important today, for the students then at that time, they had no idea that the actions that they were taking would inspire us today to also take action. Today we can create stories and create history and using their stories and using their ideas, we can improve the world and create change as well. One more story in particular is that of John Washington. This is John. In our museum, we tell the story of the Battle of Fredericksburg and how the civilians experienced it. But John Washington's story of survival begins at birth as he navigated his life as an enslaved man. The memoir, his memoir was rediscovered in the 1980s, and in it, he tells the story of the pain and the injustice of enslavement, but also the bittersweetness of acquiring his freedom, which he gained in 1862, when Union soldiers offered him the opportunity to cross the Rappahannock River into the Union camps. Now imagine you're in a war zone, and the people that you are subject under want to kill you for trying to connect and work with the enemy. At the same time, the people who you think are your saviors, you're not sure about, and you don't know. But John Washington decided to make a change, decided to take a chance and acquire his freedom. 
years later. Sorry, excuse me. He acquired his freedom, and then he went on to help the Union soldiers in their camps. He also then became a sign painter in Washington, D.C., and lived out the rest of his life with his family. Imagine what decisions we could make faced with the same situation. His story was real. And recently, I heard a dramatization by an actor named Elliot Dash recount the memoir of John Washington, and I was recharged and re-energized with the courage to continue to be inspired by history. History is stories can be used to improve the world. Stories like the ones from Afro My Afrobet's book, from the toolkit, from a museum exhibit, from street signs, to even a school name, can inspire history and inspire you to make changes and create new ideas. Be curious, find those stories, and improve the world. Thank you. <laughs>